Hello everyone and welcome back to another Flutter news today. Flutter 122 has arrived and with that we have a new patch rundown that I want to do with you. And there are exciting new topics like for example the iOS 14 upgrade, Android 11 support, a lot of different stuff has changed. My name is Max and this are the Flutter news. This video is brought to you by the Flutter Complete Reference Book. Before we take now a more profound look into the Flutter release, I would like to thank all the contributors to the Flutter repository. With the new patch, we have now over 3000 issues closed and 1944 pull requests merged into the GitHub repository, which is fantastic. To make the newest version of Flutter more compatible for the new iOS 14 release, there have been quite some changes. The recommendation of the Flutter team is to update to 1.22 if you support iOS 14. Besides of a lot of stability improvements, it is now already possible to use the newest features of iOS 14, like for example clipboard notifications, system font reading and debugging. Another significant milestone that the Flutter team has reached this time is to update the Kubernetes icons to 1.0. That includes more than 900 new icons and also will update the look and feel of the icons to the newest version of iOS. Last but not least, there is a new feature on iOS 14 called App Clips. App Clips is a small application lower than 10 megabyte that without installation is available on your iOS device. Check out the links down in the video description because Flutter supports of course this App Clips. So you will find there an example app that supports that and also more information about App Clips. For the new Android 11 version, there are some smaller changes. First, but not less impactful, is the improvements of the notching system and safe area of Android 11. So now it is possible to support also the cutouts and edge of waterfall displays, which is fantastic. If this is new for you, a safe area is something that secures your screen, so you have no notches or anything else in the side and you can work with that, that nothing blocks your views for the user. My favorite update for Android 11 and Flutter 122 is the fix for the scrolling or the animation of the keyboard. So now you can see that this keyboard comes up and with it the content of Flutter is also coming up in the same manner. No more jumping around, no more jankiness, it looks impressive so this will improve the user experience way more. Last but not least there is a deprecation information in the patch that tells you if you use the add to app API from Android version 1 to upgrade to version 2 because the version 1 will be deprecated. So that means all your new plugins that you create with this add to app feature will be now automatically on version 2. So be careful if you are working with that on version 1. This will be not yet a breaking change but a deprecation warning. So you have been warned. Expanding the button universe is the next topic. What happens is now there is a new alignment to the material design specification. We have now three more button types, the text button, elevated button and outline button. We will not lose the old button, so it's not a breaking change, but they will be aligned and they get also their own theming. Material design specification and the flutter design is now an on point and they are related to each other again. The Flutter team also improved the internationalization like LTN and I18N. Now it is possible to have hot reload inside of your application if you change the ARP files. If you have never seen that, an ARP file is the translation file for your Flutter applications if you use the standard procedure. Additionally, the Flutter framework supports now the character package. The character package is an interesting one because it improvements for your ASCII code, for Unicode and also emojis and text fields. So if you have, for example, a max limit for a text field, now the emoji will only take one letter instead of a lot of them. If you are interested more into the character package, you will find down in the video description below the link to it. Google Map and Web View is now ready for production. Google Maps and Web View for Flutter is now on version 1.0, which means for Google it is production ready. That is interesting because it is now not anymore necessary to include the 
embedded views preview restriction to the info p list. For more information about these two packages, you will find the links down in the video description below. Navigator 2.0 is a very large topic, as you can guess. So there is a whole new infrastructure for the Navigator part, and this is now a long running process. And finally, Navigator 2.0 has been released. What does that mean? There are a bunch of new fixes and features that has been included and also makes it more transparent where you want to route because at the moment it was very hidden and now it will be more explicit. Navigator 1.0 was imperative and Navigator 2.0 is now declarative. If you have heard that word, that is because Flutter is completely declarative besides of the Navigator 1.0, it was imperative. Now all is aligned and we can use it more easily and if you check out the link down in the video description below, there is an article of John Ryan. He created a fantastic article about where he explains all the architecture, everything of the Navigator in detail. I highly recommend to read through that one if you are interested in Navigator 2.0. Preview stage restoration for Android. That is a very interesting topic because it was one of the most liked issues on the Flutter repository and finally it is here. When your application was in the background, sometimes the device was calling this application to get killed. And after that, if you come back to the application, it was completely lost its state. So it started completely fresh. Now it is possible with this feature to restore your UI state with a mix-in that you can use. And this is the idea of that. If the background process somehow kills your app completely, there is now some default behavior, like for example, text fields keep their text that is already entered. And um, list views, for example, keep the state where they have scrolled to. Unfortunately, there is one one thing that is not saved at the moment and this is the navigation state not for 1.0 or 2.0 navigator that means if your app is killed in the background unfortunately the flutter will not know where the user was before to make it easier to test the flutter team decided also to add a restart and restore API inside of the widget tester. This will make it easier to test the state restoration in your applications and you can see if your mix-in works fine. The next thing is the smooth scrolling for unmatched input and display frequencies. Whew, all right, so that was a very long one, but at the end what happens is if you scroll and the different frequency of your smartphone, I don't know the whole technical details, but it will reduce a lot of the jankiness and the scroll behavior. So if you have some problems with scrolling and frequencies, this flag could help you like 97% of reduction of jankiness of the application. So check it out if you have there are some issues. A new unified Dart developer tools update. That was a very small part of the article, but I found that very interesting. The Dart development tools will now align more to the Flutter development tools. That means if you want, for example, uh, the Dart FMT or the Dart Analyzer to use, beforehand you needed to execute a different um, execution. But now you will just enter Dart space analyze in the CLI and you will execute the analyzation of your application. This is very interesting because it aligns now more to Flutter and will embed Flutter and Dart even more. App size analyze tool. I like that one. So for everyone, for all the friends of tree shaking and optimize their app size, we have finally more tools to find the pain points that we have if our app size is too big. So with this nice little flag, you will get a result list of all the different packages or files that you have in your um, in your bundle and you can see which one of them is too big so that you can get rid of them. Also there has been an update for the DevTools and Flutter so now you can also see in the network tab for example the HTTP request response which is very important for a lot of people <laughs> especially for myself and you have a search and filter option because sometimes your application will make a lot of HTTP requests and you have now the possibility to filter them quickly. Very good information about for myself the DevTools has been now injected into the IntelliJ. That means that the Dart DevTools have now the possibility to see directly in Android Studio improved output linking in Visual Studio Code. I didn't even know that, but it seems that if there was a stack trace in Visual Studio Code, you had some terrible time to follow up the linking. Now it is way more structured and easier to follow. So if you click the link, you should jump directly to the part where you are. This will be extremely helpful, super good to debug, and I hope you will enjoy that. 
Of course, with a lot of changes, there are also some breaking changes, this time exactly free. Prevent viewport show on screen from scrolling, synthetic package generation by default, build routes even less. I will add them down in the video description below because you will find there a migration path if you've come to these problems. The Flutter Complete reference contains all information about Flutter and Dart that you will need to boost your Flutter development experience. It includes the basics of the Dart language, Flutter UI toolkit, best practices and all of them are supported by concrete examples. Alberto Miola surrounded himself with an amazing team like Felix Angelov, the creator of the block pattern, Remy Roslet, creator of Riverpod and Provider, and Mate Joyseta, or better known as RizoCoder. Excellent guys, this was my Flutter release rundown for 1.22. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please hit the like button and give me some comments what you think about this new release. If you are new to this channel, feel free to subscribe for new amazing content. Thanks for watching, until the next time. See ya guys.